This is the crown jewel, Mr. Good as Gold. This is Connor Hopkins. I am Eric S. Knight. And I'm a league champion. And we are the chosen Prodigal Sons, and this is the Shotgun Wrestling Radio Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's Leon King here, of course, the baddest of the baddest. And you are now listening to Shotgun Wrestling Radio. This is Gavin Parker, and you're listening to Shotgun Wrestling Radio. This is the mechanic, Big Beasley, and you are listening to Shotgun Wrestling Radio. This is your deathmatch daddy, Bo Guy, and you're watching Shotgun Wrestling Radio. Welcome, everybody, to a very special edition of Shotgun Wrestling Radio. I'm your host, Zach Tagus, and with it being Monday of WrestleMania week, I want to do something a little bit different, something we really haven't done, oh, in quite some time. I haven't really talked national scene wrestling probably since Greg passed away in 2020 because that was always kind of our thing, and I was like, I'm going to leave that alone, but I feel like there's so much that's happened in the wrestling landscape. We need to bring some people on and talk about this epic week that we are set up to have, and it kind of kicked off with a bang, and I'm honored to invite in one of my guests at this time. I've got a couple other people that are going to hop in here as well, but from the Card Subject to Change podcast, the Wizard CZ joining me my tip right now, and CZ, my friend, I had the honor of meeting you guys at the Absolute Pro Show a couple weeks ago, and it's great to have you on the pod, man. Hey, it's great to be here. I'm excited. WrestleMania week. I got I got the chills already. It's going to be a great week. And, you know, it kind of started off today with a bang with the uh, CM Punk interview on the MMA Hour show today. And I, I'll be honest, I don't know if you've gotten a chance to watch it or see any highlights from it, but I did not expect to see any like AEW talks. I figured, oh, he had the NDA shit that we saw all about afterwards and there were a couple of things he was like, yeah, I can't talk about that. But for the most part, he was actually pretty open. Like he talked all about what happened with J- uh, Jack Perry and, you know, Hangman Page. And it basically sounds like the only thing he can't ever talk about is the brawl out, which I found was pretty interesting. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to to tune in just yet. I heard bits and pieces and just, uh, you know, riding the rails with AEW uh, just – I'm anxious to hear what all he had to say, but yeah, starting the week off hot and heavy with, uh, with CM Punk and just blasting, uh, going to town with AEW that, uh, always, uh, always fun way to kick off WrestleMania week. And I'll be honest, man, like I watched the whole thing while I was sitting here at work, I pull it up on my phone and it really wasn't like anything malice. Like he didn't say anything that I think is going to get him in legal trouble. Like I think he's smarter than that. And, I mean, the dude genuinely, to me, seems like he's at peace and he's genuinely happy. And he's like, you know, everyone always, and I said this from the beginning, he's like, everyone always likes to yell about WWE having writers and producers and all this thing. And he's like, we actually, he was talking about the Hangman segment. He's like, we had it all kind of mapped out for where we want to go. And basically Hangman went off script. And he's like, that's kind of where it went downhill from there. And he's like, I told Tony multiple times, you need to handle this or you're not going to like the way I do it. And sure enough, Tony would rather be a friend than a boss. And unfortunately, I think that's going to hinder them quite a bit. I I agree. I uh, never been a big fan of the way Tony Khan handles his business. I I'm I'm a fan of AEW to an extent. It's not not my go to, but just the way that the way that things are run there, I've always said that Tony needs to bring in. Oh, the best example I can think of is like a Bill Watts type of guy, someone who's going to rein in the roster and just keep everybody in check. Yep. Well, and Punk brought up a great point because he said Jack wanted to hit the car, the the windshield of the car, and he's like, "Okay, this is a rental car. You do this, and we return the rental car. That rental company is going to say, hey, 'Hey, we're not going to rent cars out to wrestlers anymore.' And he's like, if it's a national chain like Hertz, that's going to hurt." Pun intended. That's going to hurt a lot of wrestlers who rent wrestling, who rent cars to drive from city to city. But yeah, I'm kind of like you, man. They've really gone away from me a lot the last year or so. Ever since really Punk left, it's kind of started for me when Cody left even because Cody's always been just yeah. that dude that's so li- that's so likable, you know, and he's just easy to cheer for. And it's like when he left, it was kind of like okay, the tide was in for me was turning a little bit, and then Punk goes out and say okay the tide's turning again and yeah it's just kind of <laughs> wild to watch how thing and then just to see you know tony's wild t- twitter antics too i'm like man you, got, you gotta be a little bit more professional than that instead of worrying about what eric bischoff is saying about you 
Right. I mean, I love Eric Bischoff. I'm a fan of his podcast, but yep. in the grand scheme of things, how relevant is he in, in today's wrestling world? Yeah. Other than his podcast. I mean, right. It's a nostalgic podcast. He sure he can have his opinion. He's entitled to that, but Tony needs to not let those voices creep into his head and affect him. And that's the funniest thing about all of this to me is that he lets a guy like Bischoff get under his skin so bad. I'm like, he's been out of the business for how many years? And like you said, I love all of his podcasts that he does. I'm a weekly listener. And it's like, God, he just really loves to let Eric get under his skin a little bit. And, you know, speaking of podcasts, like you said, you're from the Card Subject to Change podcast. Before our other guests start trickling in here, let's talk a little bit about theirs. Because you guys also, like we do here on Shotgun, you guys love to cover independent wrestling as well. Absolutely. Uh, one of our, one of our go-to coverage is independent wrestling. We bring a lot of, a uh, lot of independent guys on, uh, particularly I'm in the quad cities. So Iowa, as you know, is a hotbed for independent wrestling. The quad cities is no different with the black and brave Academy right in our backyard. So a lot of SCW pro talent, uh, coming in and out of the show, uh, Names that you would know, JT Energy, he actually just started doing a weekly segment for us. His moment of focus, about a minute or two each week, he's on uh, creeping into our podcasts. But we love everything wrestling, particularly into the indies. Um, <clears throat> we've got some guests lined up that are outside of SCW Pro that I'm really excited for coming up in the next couple of months, too. Uh, I love that we get to branch out and meet new people from across the Midwest and hopefully soon across the nation. Well, that's the cool thing. Like when we started our pod, we started our show in 2010. And I think even in 2010, there was maybe only two or three companies running. I know you had Impact Pro Wrestling. That was one that we covered pretty heavily. Central Empire Wrestling was kind of going, kind of fluttering a little bit. I'm not sure. I don't think SCW is running quite yet because I remember meeting. I remember meeting Seth Rollins on the Independent Circuit because he was coming back every once in a while for like three XW. I know he did some couple appearances for them. And now you look at it. I I know I tallied it up. In March, there was a different company that ran a show every weekend. I'm not surprised at all. And I was fortunate enough to get to a couple of those shows. Even like if you cross the river here with us, there's companies. I was I was very fortunate enough. A friend of ours, uh, DB, who is the ring announcer for uh, Iron Spirit Pro that runs out of Normal, Illinois. He also occasionally ring announces or is one of the ring announcers, I should say, for Dreamwave Wrestling, which is huge. You know, all over Iowa and Illinois, I'm sure you can find some kind of wrestling to go to on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. Maybe not necessarily this weekend. Right. But... Yeah, I, think, I, think a lot, I think a lot of companies were smart and took this weekend, at least locally, off. So I think a lot of companies were smart in that standpoint. But yeah, I went to I went to three shows last month. One of them I did commentary for. But yeah, the other two I went as a fan. I went to Absolute Pro last weekend. And then this past weekend, I went to Rugged Pro. And then I had just left right before the fan had hopped the ring. And I don't know if you've seen that footage. That's been going yes. kind of viral today. I, I was talking to Austin Fouts earlier. I'm like, he's like, dude, we have 1.5 million hits across like three videos. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Like, you know, one thing shit. I'm <laughs> exactly. I'm a former ring announcer. I know, I know a lot of the boys really well. I know as a fan, do not ever get in that ring. You're gonna get your ass kicked. I'm sorry, you you just are. <laughs> this is this is entertainment. It's not, these people are not here for you to actually hate and display. Well, I mean, they are, but not in the sense that you get in the ring and try and try and pick a fight with them. Cause you're going to get the shit kicked out of you. I remember going to a nitro one time. I think it was 99 and a fan jumped the guardrail right at the end of the show. So I was like, he was, at least he was smart to jump at the end of the show. So we still got to see the full show, but macho man was in the ring and macho was just beat the shit out of this dude before they <laughs> finally yanked him out of there and got him out of the ring. I, I know that one's on the WWE Network somewhere, but yeah, they just absolutely, he, I just remember watching him, me and my friend were sitting there like, holy shit. <laughs> oh. Well, and the best part about the video that came out from the show this past weekend was the dude tapping like it was going to make a difference. I'm like, <laughs> was not going to let you go, dumbass. <laughs> no, no. 
Oh, <laughs> uh, that was probably the best uh, part of it. I t anytime I see the video reposted, I'm like, God damn, that's the best part. Just him. Hey, let me go. <laughs> Tapping out. Let me go. Let me go. No, so, sucker. So as we turn now to like WrestleMania week, man, what are some of the things? I mean, obviously we have the big WrestleMania and the NXT stand and deliver. Is there anything outside of those two shows? Because every independent company that you can think of feels like flocks to whatever city they are and they run shows and. We have a, just a great week of wrestling action. Is there anything outside of Mania that you are looking forward to watching? There's a few things, and we actually, uh, we actually had our did our weekly show yesterday that we normally do, uh, previewing independent wrestling for the weekend. The the two biggest things that stand out off the top of my head. The first one has got to be Bloodsport. I I heard the name of that last year and. I'm I'm thinking Bloodsport sounds like just a gore fest of garbage. Well, I, I I'm not trying to offend anybody if you're into hardcore or deathmatch wrestling. I don't. I think it's garbage. Uh, I will watch an occasional deathmatch or whatever, but not my cup of tea. That's what I thought when I heard Bloodsport. Watching it though, I'm just enthralled by no ropes on the ring, specific set of rules. It just it looks fantastic. You've got some great names. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head what the big match that I was looking forward to. Uh, Mike Speedball Bailey is involved, and I can't yep. think of who. I think he's facing Nick Nemeth. Oh yeah, and I know um, WWE formerly is Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, and WWE is loaning them Shayna Baszler as well. So Shayna Baszler. Is gonna be on Bloodsport, which would be pretty exciting, I think. I think so too. The other big match that I'm looking for forward to is it's got to be a GCW. It's got to be Mancer against Effie in the mm -hmm. I Quit match. That is gonna be brutal. You know, I say I'm not a fan of deathmatch wrestling, but that is that is gonna push the limits of what I enjoy for sure. And I, but I've always been a fan of both of them. Uh, Mancer, of course, being closely tied with one of my good friends from from Card Subject to Change, uh, one called Manders, uh, their recent Fallen Out. But that, that, I'm just super excited because that match is going to blow anything out of the water this weekend, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I'm. There's another one, and I know everybody gets kind of tired of like the ECW reunion shows, but there's one being put on by this Battleground Championship Wrestling, I believe, and it seems like they kind of have a who's who of people at their show. I think it's Friday night, and I think it's I think it's being live streamed, but they have quite a bit of um the old ecw crew kind of getting back together for this one. That one kind of mm -hmm. intrigued me a little bit. I don't know. I probably won't catch it live. Friday night we are we're actually going to a concert Friday night but I don't think I'll, so I don't think I'll be able to catch it live but uh, I'm going to pause right there and I'm going to welcome in at this time my brother-in-law I believe uh Dylan is joining us so we're kind of going off the seat of our pants here just doing this as anybody can pop in and we're just talking Wrestlemania weekend and again we have the wizard CZ for the card subject change podcast Maybe if DJ can get his stuff to connect, DJ will join us here eventually. DJ is also my co-color commentator for Central Empire Wrestling that we do have been doing for quite some time. There he is. Hello, buddy. So, can, you, can you hear me? Oh, there he is. Yay, technology. Can, can you hear me? Am I am I here? Yep, you're here. I can, can hear you. Hear us? Can you okay. hear us? Okay. I can, I can hear you guys. If you can hear me, everything should be good. I'm not very good with this technology. I'm pretty bad for an electrician. I don't know how to use computers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dylan, we were just kind of talking about some things we were looking forward to. I don't know if you had a chance to look, but if it's anything WrestleMania related, obviously we're all excited for the main event. I'm going to tell you right now, go out of your way to watch the CM Punk interview from earlier today. That was fantastic. Um, and they also yeah, announced too caught some bits and pieces of that on Twitter. It sounds like it's pretty uh pretty I mean, interesting stuff he's got to say. When I told CZ, I'm like, none of it was like out of malice. Like he didn't he wasn't angry about it. Like the dude actually seems very calm and very at peace. Like he didn't really it was mm -hmm. nothing that I think is gonna get him in legal trouble by any stretch, but 
Um, they also announced that Cody's going to be on the MMA Hour on Wednesday, so that should be a lot of fun. Yeah, should be good. Talking about you know, fresh off his news that he signed a new contract with WWE, so yep. see if he discusses that. And obviously, the main event of WrestleMania coming up this weekend, both nights, two nights main event for Cody Rhodes this weekend. Yeah. Yep. First uh, um, first person ever to main event two WrestleMania nights in a row. Yeah, and it's, yes. it's kind of funny, too, because so. even um, <clears throat> one had admitted when Ariel Harini had asked him if the, what the plan was for Mania before the injury, and obviously it was supposed to be Punk versus Rollins, and I'm assuming that was going to be night one. Here's my question to you guys, and CZ, we'll start with you. Do you think they really pivoted from Rock and Roman to this tag team match or do you think this was the plan all along you know i want to lean towards this being the plan all along i think they were trying to swerve us with what looked like a pivot but i i really think once we knew that punk was injured and couldn't be the be the main event against seth rollins i think this was the plan that they went with that they were going to go with from the beginning after finding out about punk's injury that's that's just what i think Dylan, what about you? I I kind of have to agree with that. I think WWE swerved us all and knew this was going to be the outcome. I didn't believe it at first, but the more this has played out, I truly believe that um, having The Rock come back and having Cody just kind of hand over his main event spot, I, I, I've turn my opinion to the fact that I think this has been a whole work on all of us wrestling fans and setting up. And it's been fantastic. Whether it was the plan or not, I have to say. Heel Rock has been absolutely phenomenal. And I think it has just elevated both him and Cody. I should say all four. I I think Cody, Seth, Roman, and Rock are all going to come out uh, much better from this than going in in my opinion yeah you know i couldn't agree with you more i feel like especially when there was talk about rock coming back originally you know he went on pat McAfee show like back in january i think it was kind of after the tko news got announced and he was like i'm a long game mm-hmm. planner i'm like january to march april is not really long game planning if you're a long game planner and we've seen all sorts of hints that you know the rock doing the Instead of the and all kind of little hints that at some point Rock could turn on Roman to set up next year's WrestleMania, because all of us wrestling fans have said all along, Rock versus Roman does not need a title. I mean, it's just it no, is no. what is that match alone. It just no, it doesn't need a title. That's where I think wrestling fans were so irritated when they finally announced it, and the We Want Cody movement really just took full force and. I, I truly think if Cody doesn't win, Philadelphia will riot. I can agree with that. And here, let me even counter that. With Cody's promo, the interview with Michael Cole from a few weeks ago, where he was tearing up and talking about his mom and his family, after something like that, doesn't he have to win? Doesn't he have to walk away with the title? Because that would just destroy any credibility that he's gained if he doesn't. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you, especially after the disappointment we all felt at last year's WrestleMania. Like, I know how disappointed we were all with last year's, because last year really felt like, okay, they're finally going to do it. They're finally going to do it. It was just the biggest punch to the nuts that we've had. And it's like, I was truly wondering, like, okay, how do they come back from this? Because it just felt, and I, they kept saying, oh, we're in the bottom of the third inning. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm bored of Roman. Like, it's been a thousand something days. And his matches are all the same. I mean, yeah. hold on. And this is where I think, and I feel like most wrestling fans are getting to this point. They, we all feel like Cody, Rock and Roman are probably winning night one, and Cody's going to have to go through hell night two to finally overcome the odds. And when you say go through hell, I've got to ask the question that I think is on everybody's mind. Does the Rock cost Roman to set up WrestleMania? Mania 41. Does that happen on night two of this year? I would not be surprised if they do like a thing. It's a very good point. 
I wouldn't be surprised if they did a thing like what they did with Rock and Cena, where this match happens, yeah. Cody wins with maybe some help from The Rock, maybe. And night and the night after Raw, they announced the bit. They finally announced Rock versus Roman for Mania, or hell, they could do it at SummerSlam because SummerSlam is a big stadium show too. Because Rock is going away come May first. He's filming a movie. Come May first, that guy's gone. He's out of here for at least a few months. So you could either do it at yeah. SummerSlam or, or hell, you could the way they built this, you could do Rock versus Cody. Yeah, there's a number of possibilities that can come out. I can see a lot of branches coming off of the roots that they've planted, the seeds that they've planted. Excuse me, uh, coming going into this WrestleMania, a lot of possibilities. I'm I, I'm just excited as a fan. I love speculating what what could happen. I love predicting what I would like to see, but. More importantly, I I have can't think of the last time uh, before I'd say it started about two years ago, right around WrestleMania 38, when they just started really building momentum and getting people more and more interested and back into the product. It just it excites me as a fan to see what's going to happen next. I know a lot of people are sick of the bloodline, and I can understand that. The only reason that Roman comes out of that with the title is if they want to beat Hulk Hogan's record. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they're going to pull that trigger. Yeah. I really don't. It's, I just, yeah, I truly think Philadelphia will riot. I think they all have riots on their hands if Cody does not walk out champion. Because you really just felt the air out of the end of that crowd that last year's WrestleMania. That, I mean, they had Cody's family front row. It was such a happy-go-lucky moment. And then for it to end the way it did, you just felt like the fans got kicked in the balls. I mean, it was just, it was hard for you. I, I, I'd be shocked if they don't win, if they don't let Cody win this time around. Because yeah, I just, no other words for it. I'll be, I'll be shocked. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you guys this. Kind of backtrack to the Royal Rumble a little bit. Did they call an audible at the Rumble? Was Punk supposed to come away with the win if he hadn't gotten injured? In my opinion, no. I think the plan was always Punk was going to win the chamber and then challenge Seth for the title. That's what I think was the plan. Okay, I can see that. I just was curious. Yeah, because remember, I think Punk that was got... their original plan. Yeah, well, especially go go back to the Rumble too. At the end of the Rumble, who was Cody yelling at? Who was Cody pointing at up in the press box? So for all this, all of a sudden, I mean, that's where it's like, okay, what? They've done such an amazing job, and I don't think it's any secret that it's not Vince McMahon's WWE anymore. I mean... No, without a doubt. Yeah, no, it's it's very obvious, and, and kind, of, kind of what he was saying earlier, the building of the excitement the last two years, since 38, you know, I, I'm about as big of a Cody fan as you can get. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, repping, I'm repping my Cody shirt here on the on the uh, zoom call here tonight, you know, when he came back, I, I, I popped pretty hard. I don't let my wife talk to me when Cody's on my TV. <laughs> uh, I, I truly think he has to win this year. I, I just, it, it, to me, it, it, sorry, I'm kind of stuttering here. But to, to me, it, it, it ruins all that good faith that Triple H has been building up with his booking because if, if, if Cody doesn't win, it's for the fans to get invested in anymore. Yes. If he does not yeah. finish this story, you know, what's who who is there left to believe? The Rock? Okay, I guess. But then where do you go from there? I mean, we all know Rock's not sticking around long term. He's having a fantastic run now. So if Cody does not win, where do you pivot to? That is a brilliant point about the Triple H booking because, yeah, since Mania 38, where we kind of felt like that was kind of right around the time that Hunter was maybe first trying to take over when the first Vince retirement came around. And, yeah, you really just felt like that building. And then Vince, last year's Mania, snuck his way back in. It was kind of – it felt – it sputtered for a bit. And then they kicked – then he – everything came out and – it's just amazing to me the difference from Vince's booking to Hunter's has been night and day across the board. Agreed. Completely agree. 
I just, yeah, I just, I agree with you though, DJ. I don't think you can keep up the goodwill with your fans. And especially, if the funny thing is too, Hunter is always preaching. The one thing he was taught was listen to your audience. Your audience wants Cody to have this moment. I mean, there's a reason you're doing all this. You're making him go through the hoops. And I wouldn't be surprised. I know there was rumors. I'm curious to see how the opening for WrestleMania is going to be. Do, do you guys think they get Sylvester Sloan involved? I wouldn't be surprised at all. I mean, right. who better to, who better to kick it off in Philadelphia? <clears throat> Rocky himself. Exactly. And yeah, I could, oh my gosh, the possibilities there could be just tremendous. Have Sylvester Sloan with the video package, the Rocky theme. I mean, it would be kind of cool if they did. You remember the training vignette from WrestleMania 12 with Brett and Sean? Have that for like Cody and I have Sylvester kind of, you know, talking and talking his way through Cody's training regime and hyping it up. And I'm like, I know that their opening video package, they're going to knock it out of the park because WWE's production team is just 10 to none. And I'm, I'm excited to see. I'll be disappointed if they don't get Sylvester Sloan involved in some way. I can agree with that. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he should be. I think it's the right move, but <clears throat> I mean, wait and see. I'm ex- I'm like I said before, I'm excited to see what we're going to what we're going to get. Uh, I'm excited to see. I'm sure there's going to be another couple of matches announced this week. I kind of have a feeling as to what they might be, but I, I want to see I want to see what the full card looks like. I want to see I'm I'm just excited. <laughs> so I'll run, I'll run down what's currently on WWE.com as of Monday evening at six, almost 6.30 here. Obviously, rock the, the Bloodline thing, uh, World Heavyweight title, Seth versus Drew, which that bill has been awesome as well. EO Sky versus Bailey for the WWE Women's Championship. Rhea versus Becky for the Women's World title. Logan Paul versus Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens for the United States tri- title and a triple threat. Gunther versus Sami Zayn. For the Intercontinental title. Jamie versus Jay. Another great build up there. You have the Undisputed Tag Team 6 Pack Tag Team Ladder Match. LA Knight versus AJ Styles. Yeah, well, I should have reversed that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar and Dominic Mysterio. And they did announce a tag team uh, Philadelphia Street Fight today. I believe it was with um, AOP and. Oh god, I can't. I totally forgot who they're feuding with right now. Um, My guess would be the Street Profits. Street Profits. Yes, yeah, so Street Profits and AOP and the. Um, uh, the... <clears throat> yeah, they don't have it officially listed on their website, but Nick Aldis did make that announcement uh, earlier today on the Twitter fear as it is going to be a Philadelphia Street fight. So that should be, you know, that that match should be what it is for what it is. But on the undercard. Again, solid undercard. Jimmy versus Jay. Mania is meant for brother versus brother. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember back how good uh, Brett versus Owen was back in the day. You got to think these two can knock it out of the park, too. I'm, uh, I love the dynamic. I love the the back and forth. The Jay, obviously, with the yeet chance and Jimmy with the no yeet and just not a fan of, of the word yeet, although I'll use it <laughs> when necessary, but uh, <laughs> it just, it looks like a great build between those two. And that's, that's going to be, I think that is a dark horse. That's going to be a sleeper match there. That is going to surprise a lot of people just how good it's going to be. Yeah. <clears throat> and another, another one that I'm looking forward to that's actually had a nice build. I don't feel enough people are talking about LA Knight versus AJ Styles. I don't think AJ has really had a bad WrestleMania match since he came in. I mean, him and Shane McMahon, for fuck's sake, had a great match. I mean, this one I think should be a hell of a lot of fun, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan, your turn. No, I think it's going to be a great match. Again, obviously a big LA Knight fan here, but also a big AJ fan. Uh, their build has been incredible. You know, last week or uh, two weeks ago, I can't remember now, when they had the angle where L.A. Knight went down to Georgia and attacked A.J. Styles at his home. Fun little video there, you know, yep. getting arrested. And then last week with uh, L.A. Knight playing the security guard and surprising A.J. 
it's it's been a fun build up. I think it's going to be a good match. I mean, it's AJ like you said hasn't really had a bad Mania match. This is I believe LA Knight's first Mania match. I Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. I don't think he had one last year, but big moment for him. So, I think it'll be a good match. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we do only got about 10 minutes left here on the call. So before we kind of settle things down here, guys, let's kind of go through some predictions. What do we think is going to happen with the tag? We'll start this. We'll, so we don't know. I'm assuming it's going to get announced here tonight about what match on what nights. But what do you guys think is going down with the tag team match as far on night? I mean, that one's night one, obviously. I'm still at the theory that um, Rock and Roman are winning so that way Cody has to go through hell on night two. I'd be surprised if that that's not the way it happens. I'm I'm sure you're right. Uh, has to be. I mean, you got to throw every obstacle you can at Cody and have him come out all the better for it. Dylan. Absolutely. I uh, I'm sticking to my prediction, and I, I I've seen it thrown out there on Twitter or X, whatever you call it these days. Um. Cody's assembling the Avengers to take down Roman. I think he's going to have backup. I think, you know, a couple weeks ago, maybe foreshadowed with that semi truck with Stone Cold and John Cena in the background. Um, if, if you've noticed with Triple H in charge, things in the background are something to pay attention to. You know, yes. He's very deliberate of those little Easter eggs in the background. So I think with rumors that Cena and Austin are going to be involved in mania somehow, I think that's how they get involved. Uh, two of the rocks, biggest adversaries uh, coming back to take down the, the final boss and help Cody finally finish that story. That's my prediction. That's my opinion. We'll see if it happens. All right, Dylan, you're joining us a little bit late. We only have a few minutes left. So quick, what are your yeah. thoughts? What's what are your thoughts for Mania this weekend? I think you're going to go you against the grain based on what we talked about these, this weekend. I go into these deep rabbit holes, dude. Like, I don't – like, I go on the most extreme of extremes, if we're going to be completely honest. I put a $50 bet down to have Cody lose, okay? But also Drew has to win. So Drew has to win. Get out of here. here. And Roman has to win. And both I, those things have to have me to win $50. It's worth it. And I agree I, with Drew winning. I agree with that. I think I think they pull the trigger on Drew. I'll give you Drew. I'll give you Drew. Yeah. But Cody losing, no, absolutely not. And get I get out of here. It's only it's not only just Drew winning the title. I think it's Drew or uh, Damian Priest coming and cashing in on him instead of Roman and Cody, in my opinion. But you know they can always be. There's so many different different avenues they can go down. You know, but. I see, I see Seth Rollins and The Rock both turning at the same time on night one. I can also see that. I have had that thought come come to mind. I know that sounds crazy, but like, that's, that's, what's, what's always, you see, that's an bro. interesting idea. It's not as far <laughs> as you may think. I... It's like for real though, because like it's like Seth is his little brother, like, and they beat the shit out of The Rock at one point. I'm pretty sure on a TV show as a Shield, so. I mean, you you literally had your cousin who was shield beat quite down the rock, the yeah, people. yeah, yeah. Like they're, I mean, like straight up, like beat up the most popular superstar in our in our lifetime of maybe even all time. You know what I mean? The Rock's the biggest biggest name ever. So yeah. I mean, them them saying, "Hey, you gotta you gotta like, you know, uh, acknowledge me as my as as tribal chief." I'm sure that he doesn't take that very very well you know what i mean so it's like okay like yeah they could totally do this double turn here simultaneously and then the next night the bloodline is out of the fold because the rock actually helped him you know what i mean and then maybe and maybe he screws, up, if he screws up, him over next night, you know what i mean well and it sets up rock versus roman for next year and exactly or at SummerSlam, or yeah. whatever you yeah. want yeah you know. all right we got about uh, five minutes left here cz where can people follow you and the Card Subject to Change podcast, my friend? So on Facebook, it is Card Subject to Change podcast. Everywhere else, X, 
Instagram. Uh, it is at CSTC podcast, YouTube, especially uh, me. I am at the wizard CZ on all socials X Instagram. I believe I have a TikTok, but I don't use it very often. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right Dil- Dil- uh, Damien there. Where can people follow you and your wrestling adventures? Oh man, I can't remember all my wrestling tags, but I believe it's uh, Damien Saint underscore three six three three. I think is what it is. Um, and then I have a TikTok. Just look up Damien Saint; it should come up right away. Um, and you can just follow my Facebook page, Damien Saint. Um, there are two Damien Saints. Just make sure you grab the one with the really nice photo that Manning did for me. Um, so that's that's where you can find me at. And Dylan, what about you, my friend? You don't want to follow me. <laughs> so, I don't right, post guys. anything worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. This was a quick call. Uh, I, I, I post on X and Instagram. Mostly pictures of my cat and my wife. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, guys. That's going to do it for us here as we keep winding down. A quick little call. I wanted to chat a little bit of the mainstream stuff. Hope everybody enjoys Mania Week because, man, it's going to be a lot of fun. So until next time, we'll see you right here on the World Wide Web.